My presentation is entitled, What on Earth is Happening? And there's no question mark at the end of that because this is my attempt to explain just that, what on earth is happening on our planet. And recognizing the fact that researchers often stand on the shoulders of giants, men who have come before them, men and women who have done incredible research and put that out into the world, uh, I dedicate my presentation respectfully to the four individuals that you see here uh, who are what I call the four horsemen of my personal apocalypse. These are the four men that were responsible for helping me in uh, awakening myself and in, uh, in understanding this information. And uh, that is David Icke up in the upper left there, the, to the upper right, Michael Tessarian. On the bottom left, that's Jordan Maxwell, and uh, perhaps more than any other individual uh, who, ins who has inspired me, the late, great Terence McKenna there at the bottom right. So uh, this presentation is respectfully dedicated to these men. Introduction. Truth and lies. Questions and answers. Everything that I'm going to be talking about here today ultimately boils down to one thing. What is the truth about what is taking place here? And that's a big word. That's a big topic to get into. Who am I to discuss what the truth is? Who is anyone to discuss what the truth is? Is there a truth? Well, one of the main concepts in my presentation going forward that I put out there is that there is, in fact, a truth, and it is that which is. The truth is simply that which is. It is our perceptions of truth that waver from individual to individual. Some resonate with it, some do not. Some come into accordance with truth, and some waver radically away from it. But the truth is... It's unwaverable, it's unalterable, it's simply the pure state of being, it's that which is. And it exists, it is knowable. We can come to know what truth is. That is the spiritual journey. So that's what this entire presentation is ultimately about, getting to the truth. Philosophers have often made comments about truth like William Blake, he said that truth can never be told so as to be understood and not be believed. Poet and author William Blake made that statement. In other words, if you can speak the truth in a way that it is easily understandable to people, they will recognize it as such. Philosopher Arthur Schopenhauer, he said that every truth passes through three stages before it is recognized. In the first stage, it is ridiculed. In the second, it is opposed. And in the third, it is regarded as self-evident. George Bataille said that the truth is paradoxical to the extent of being exactly contrary to the usual perception. Very true statement there. Most people see things often exactly the opposite of how they really are, and they stay attached to that belief because it's more comfortable for them. So the truth can often be seen as paradoxical because it's exactly the opposite in many cases to the usual perception of most people. George Orwell said that during times of universal deceit, telling the truth becomes a revolutionary act. And indeed, what you're witnessing is an act of revolution in the times that we live in. The questions for the entire presentation are as follows. These are the questions we'll be really attempting to answer. Who are we? What is the purpose of human life? Why do we hold the beliefs that we do about ourselves and the world? Why do we act the way that we do toward ourselves and others? What is happening in the world today and why? Why, most importantly. And finally, how can we improve ourselves and by doing so improve the world in which we live? Because ultimately, uh, I believe that 
is most people's goal in life if they're a truly self-examined individual. They want to improve themselves and they want to improve the world, leave this world a better place than they found it. So these are the greatest questions that humanity has ever asked of itself. And these questions have answers. These questions are answerable. The answers are out there. The answers are discoverable. It's up to us to discover the answers to these questions. So the enemy of all truth, if you're on a quest for the truth, there are blockages, there are, there are roadblocks involved, and uh, lies and deception come up all the time when one is uh, going off in search of the truth. So uh, we want to understand how that dynamic works in this process. If there's anybody who knew a lot about lying and evil, it was this man, Adolf Hitler. He, he made this comment about a lie. He said, make the lie big. Make it simple. Keep saying it and eventually they will believe it. A technique of, for propaganda. If anyone knew more about lying than even Hitler, it was this man, the, the, the Nazi minister of propaganda during the Third Reich, Paul Josef Goebbels. He said, the bigger the lie, the more it will be believed. Contrary to what you would think, you make the lie even bigger, even more extravagant, even more encompassing, and more people will actually believe that. Which brings me to the concept of the biggest lie. So the biggest lie that we can ever be sold, or that we can ever personally buy, is simply the lie that there is no truth, or even if there is, it's undiscoverable. So why bother to even go out and search for it? This ties in with the philosophy of moral relativism. And it's a dangerous and slippery slope when you go down that path. Because if there is no truth, then there is no right or wrong either. So there is a truth. It is knowable by us. It is our job to find out what the truth is. So if you buy the biggest lie that there's no truth out there to discover, that it's all just um, perception, then you're headed down a path in which there is no right or wrong either. And it's up to anybody to decide, you know, what they think is appropriate given any particular situation. They're not really making a decision that is born in true conscience. It's just what is right for me, I'm going to do, regardless of the consequences, because I don't believe that there is actual truth to live in harmony with. So that's the most dangerous lie of all to buy. And unfortunately, most people in the world have bought this lie, that there is no truth. And therefore, the spiritual journey for them never really begins, because they're never really striving for something beyond themselves. So it's a very important thing to overcome and to get past before you go deeper into this journey. You have to believe that truth indeed does exist. Otherwise, you're not really actively searching for it. So in our search for truth, where do we go for answers? What sources do we have to go to? Well, most people go to what I call the big four, and uh, they are politics, religion, science, and the New Age movement. And each one of these is a, an, uh, an ideological system. It's a, an institutionalized system of thought. And each one of them differs in various ways, but uh, most people will go to one of these four institutionalized systems in their search for truth. And what I'm going to talk about in my presentation here today will touch upon all of these institutionalized systems. However, it cannot fit in nicely into any of these boxes because that's what they are. They're boxes for consciousness. They are paradigms. They're acceptable ways of looking at the world outside of which it is discouraged to look outside of. So uh, if you're looking into any one of these given systems of thought specifically, 
you're not going to find the whole truth encompassed within any one of these systems of thought. Because that's what they are. They're systems. They're boxes. They're, they're, they're confines, so to speak. And the truth is too big to be put in a box. It exists outside of any boxes, outside of any limitations. So we have to expand our perceptions to look beyond uh, all of the uh, current social and uh, political and religious paradigms and scientific paradigms in the world if we're really going to endeavor to find truth. So the truth is outside of all of these. We cannot limit ourselves to any one specific institutionalized thought system if we're truly serious in our search for the truth. So part one 